In Elixir, strings are called binaries. What are the implications of that? And how can we actually get at them like binaries? Hey, what's up? It's Mark at alchemist.camp where we learn Elixir and Phoenix by building things. Today is a quick tip on how strings work as binaries. Say we have the word box and this word is actually represented under the surface as a binary. You see this raw representation here and the reference, one of the reference modules is the Erlang binary module. We can pattern match this against Word. So let's first see that it is the same thing. It is the same thing. Let's pattern match. And uh, now let's try capturing some of the bytes out of it. So each of these numbers, which is separated by a comma, is one byte. So the first byte is 98. That's ASCII for uh, the letter B. The next byte is going to be ASCII for 111, and the third one will be for 120. We can match all three of them, or we can match the remainder using this double colon notation and then saying binary. Normally, each number will match a single byte. If we do binary, then it'll get any number of bytes and store it in that that variable. So if we do rest, we can see rest is aux and first is a b, first and rest will fail because it'll try to interpret rest as a single byte. We say rest is binary, then it works. Now looking at uh, looking at a single byte if you have a number that's too large for a byte, say we have 258, which is bigger than 255, which is the maximum possible value, now we see uh, it's been it's been basically uh, it, it overflows. So it, it after we get up to you know 255, if you add one more to it, it goes back to zero, and add another one to it, it goes to one, and then to two, and so on. If we had uh, if we wanted to store a larger number, we could simply specify the number of bytes, or the number of bits, I should say. So uh, in this case, this is the default behavior if we don't have any double colon at all. In this case, we'll need at least 9 bits to store it. And now we see 129, and then size 1 is 0 over here. What's going on there is uh, we're simply taking eight bits at a time from the front, so taking full bytes from the front as long as possible, and then we see whatever didn't fit in the end. And we have a single zero at the end. If we took 16 bytes or 16 bits, now we see the number two, basically what was the remainder of the modulus 256 division, and then we have one at the top. So this is like one times 256 plus two which is 258, our original number. Okay, going back to our word and our first and our rest, we can also rearrange things. We could just say, uh, take the rest first as a binary. And it's okay, this is not in the last position because we've already bound this variable rest to the binary. So it's clear how long it is. And then we put first at the end and we have OXB. That's kind of neat. Okay, now let's look at some hex. So a hexadecimal digit can have a value from 0 to F, or 15. So basically that's half of a byte. It's four bits each. Say we have a three-digit color code in hexadecimal, like, like the shorter version of what you'd see for HTML. Maybe we have uh, our color is uh, 0, or say it's 5, 8, E. If we put a 0x in front of that, that's just the hexadecimal number. We can see 58e is 1422. And if we want to look at the the individual values, well, hex of 5 is 5, 8 is 8, but hex of e is 14, which makes sense because f is 15. Um, if we want to get this color, if we want to work with this color or a pattern match on it or do anything like that, we can just grab it four bits at a time, like so. We can say red is going to be four bits, 
and then blue is going to be 4 bit or wait red green is going to be 4 bits blue is 4 bits and we'll just match that against the color and the color has to be interpreted as binary as well what did we miss here for the color okay because i didn't specify the size of the color it's assumed to be 8 we've got to tell it that it's 12 okay so we broke those 12 bits into four or into three 4 bit captures and we can see IEX did its thing again, capturing a whole byte at the beginning and then showing the remainder. So 14 here, well, 14 is just the E. Then for this byte, we can verify that pretty quickly since the first four bits of that are shifted to the left by four. So that's the same thing as multiplying by two to the fourth or 16. Five times 16 is going to be 80 and then eight, so 88. There's one more thing I wanted to touch on really quickly, and that is Unicode. See if we have a character or multiple characters that don't fit into a single byte each, like say, uh, Shinyo, which is Rhino in Chinese. Well, we can handle that just fine as a string. In fact, uh, we can, uh, uh, we can't do that in Erlang. And that's one of the nice things about Elixir is we get these binaries. In Erlang, it would be a character list like so. And the uh, there, it's not there's not a, a built-in way to handle Unicode from that. Binaries there is. We can, uh, we can actually just do this. We can uh, uh, paste in our characters in a string or a binary and just say uh, this is a binary and we get exactly what we had. Similarly, we can set uh, UTF-8 encoding. Now, UTF-8 is the default, so we see the exact same thing. We could also do UTF-16. We could do UTF-32 and see slightly different things. Uh, if we wanted to see uh, what it looks like as a binary and get the actual uh, uh, code points, we can just throw on a garbage character, say we'll make uh, a single zero at the end, with just one wasted bit here. So we can see we have some code points, 231, 138, 128, and look at that. In fact, we can get really crazy and even do pattern matching on that. So say uh, we just don't want the first three bytes, and we want to get... Uh, uh, the second character capturing it as cow and set that equal to rhino we can do it and now under cow we have the second character Neo, which is a cow why is cow 24 there we go so that is a little bit about how binaries and strings work. Unicode is obviously a huge topic, but uh, this should be enough to get you started. Check out the kernel special forms if you want to know more things you can match on here. If you learned something from this Elixir tip, then go to my newsletter, type in your name, your email, and join. I'll send you summaries with links to my newest tutorials, articles, interviews, and projects. Of course, you can unsubscribe at any time.